All right, we're going to start the year with a review of some graphs. Um, most of these you should know, or at least be familiar with, um, but by the time you finish sort of this lesson, you need to have these graphs. They're, they've got to be part of your vocabulary. So, for example, if I say, you know, y equals x squared, uh, right here, you know what that graph looks like. You don't need to think about, hmm, what's the vertex, what are the what are points. You just know exactly what it looks like. Okay, so let's um let's let's just do a quick review and and whenever you're stuck, it's useful to use a, a table of values. And so we if we would pick these values for x, and figure out what y is, you'd get four one zero one four. And this graph should look very familiar to you. Okay, this is you pretty much spent all of grade eleven reviewing this graph. Okay. Um, so now when I when I say y equals x squared, you should know those those points. You should know this is 1, 1. You should know this is 2, 4. Uh, and being perfectly symmetrical, this would be negative 2, 4. Uh, and this would be negative 1, 1. You should know that without having to think about it. Um, because we're going to be doing what's called transformations on graphs. And you need to know the basic graph so that you can move the graph. Okay? Let's look at y equals x, the absolute value of x. This one you should all also be quite familiar with. Um, again, if you pick the same values, you should remember that what this graph does is it takes every value and turns it positive. So if we put an x is negative 2 into there, the absolute value will then make it positive 2. And so it just turns everything positive. And this graph would look something like this. I think that should be pretty familiar for you. Okay. Again, um, just a quick review. Whenever you're graphing, you need to make sure that some points are labeled. So, you know, there's one way we did this is we could label these points specifically. For example, that's 2, 2. That's actually my preference. But another way to do this is if we, you know, showed what the scale is here, then it could be easily interpreted from the graph. Okay, normally when I give you a graph, I won't give you the grid. I would give you just uh, the axes, and then I prefer if you label the points rather than um, trying to uh, figure out where the grid points are. Okay, all right, the, uh, the square root of x. Now, this one you probably actually have seen before, but you're probably not really familiar with it, so we should quickly review this. Um, first of all, if I pick these same values, right away you should be saying, wait a second, I can't take the square root of a negative. This graph actually won't exist over here, all right, because I can't put a negative x into a square root, okay? But I can take the square root of 0, it's 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is the square root of 2. I actually don't really like that point because that's hard to graph. Instead, I'm going to go over here to say the 4, and the, the square root of 4 is 2. So now I can I can plot these points. So at, at 2, it would be the root of 2, which is something like 1.4, but I don't like that point. It's not as nice to graph, so that's why I'm going to pick these points to graph. Okay. And so that's the square root of x Please get used to that one. That's a very common graph, shows up a lot, and you should know these three points without having to think about it. It should be, you know, just like you know your own uh, middle name or whatever, you, you know this. It's not something you need to think about. Okay, next one is the cube of x. So this one will take the same values. And again, I'm using the table of values only as an introduction. These should become memorized. Okay, so I get something that looks like this. So these points are easy. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. But where is 2, 8? Well, 2, 8 is like way up here. And negative 2, 8 is like way down here. Negative 2, negative 8. Okay, and I don't know if you remember what this graph looks like, like but this is a, what we call a cubic wave. Okay. So it looks something like this. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so those are four basic graphs. Um, there's another one I want to go over, and that's the reciprocal. Now, we ended up grade uh, 11 with this, and, you know, I don't know, some of you maybe didn't take the unit too seriously, kind of did it a little bit flippantly. Um, so I'll maybe do this a little bit slower to make sure that you get it. So the reciprocal is if I take x and go 1 over x, that's the reciprocal of x. So in this case, we're going to take the graph f of x and reciprocate it. We're going to take the entire graph and take the reciprocal of it. Okay? In other words, whatever the y value is, we're going to go 1 divided by that y value. And if you remember this, I showed you four basic things that you should do. First of all, where f of x equals 0. Okay, now where f of x equals 0, I'm going to put in brackets, this is the x-intercept. Okay, what happens at the x-intercept? Well, 1 over f of x. Think about this. This would be 1 over 0. What happens when you have 1 divided by 0? You get what we call undefined. This is going to be a vertical asymptote. Okay? So let's go back here and look. Our graph is, this is the graph y equals x. This is just a straight line. Okay, and we're going to reciprocate this line. So I'm going to draw it here. Okay, and our first step is to take where this graph equals 0, where the x-intercept, that, that's right here, and we're taking the reciprocal of that point. The reciprocal of 0 is 1 over 0, and that is shown by putting a vertical asymptote. Okay, the vertical asymptote is x equals 0, and we draw it with a dotted line, but if you go on decimals, you're not going to see anything there. It's really not part of the graph. It's just supposed to show the behavior at that graph. Okay? Let's try the next one. Or sort of the next step. Where the original graph is equal to plus or minus 1. These are what we call, they're going to be what we call invariant points. Okay, because if I take 1 over f of x, in other words, 1 over plus or minus 1, this is still going to be plus or minus 1. So take a look. Right here, that value is 1, right? y equals 1. If I take the reciprocal of that, in other words, if I go 1 over 1, I still get 1. So that point will stay there from the original red graph it is now part of the green graph. Same with negative 1. Those are what we call invariant points. Now, very quickly, what's the y value here? It's 2. If I go 1 divided by 2, the reciprocal of 2 should become a half. Okay? And rather than do that for every single point, rather than say, okay, this is a half, and then here, 3, this becomes 1 third, and then 4, this becomes 1 fourth, rather than do that for every point, we generalize. And we say where f of x gets bigger, okay, where it approaches infinity, all right? What is the reciprocal of that? What is 1 over f of x? Well, what's 1 over a really, really big number? It's a very small number, very small. In fact, and I'm going to use the arrow here to mean this approaches 0. Okay, this means approaches. It means it's getting closer to 0. Okay, so look, the red graph up here, it's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. So when I take the reciprocal of getting bigger, it should be getting smaller. It should be heading towards zero. In fact, it will get very close to zero, but never approach zero. And if you remember last year, I said the horizontal asymptote is always zero. Well, it won't be this year, but in this one it is. So this gets closer and closer to zero. Okay? Same with where it's getting really big negative here. Okay, it's getting big that way. The reciprocal will be getting smaller, but this time it's getting smaller in a negative value, so that's why it's down here. 
Okay. And then there's one more thing where f of x, where it approaches zero. Okay, in other words, where the original graph gets really small, what is the reciprocal going to be? What is the reciprocal of one over zero? Well, we're not really putting zero, we're putting almost zero. So I'm going to put like the smallest number you can think of. This will approach a really big number. It approaches infinity. Okay, so let's look here. If I were to pick this point right here, let's say that's one-tenth. If I take the reciprocal of one-tenth, well, one over one-tenth is actually ten. So this point here, when I take the reciprocal, will be way up here at ten. Okay, and again, we generalize. Hang on, i got to get my line back. We generalize here. Rather than, you know, pick individual points like one-tenth, we say, well, as this line here gets smaller, it heads smaller and smaller, okay? Sorry, i got to get my line back. As it gets smaller, the reciprocal gets bigger. It approaches infinity. It approaches infinity, okay? So this is how to do a reciprocal graph. We're going to actually do a few of those and I'll, I'll spend some time in class going over these. But let's try this one on your own. So first let's graph just y equals x minus 2. So it would have a y-intercept of negative 2, x-intercept of 2, and this line looks like this. This is the line y equals x minus 2. And you're going to take the reciprocal of that. Okay, how do you take the reciprocal? Well, first of all, where is this graph equals zero? Remember, that's the x-intercept. So that would be here. Okay, there is a vertical asymptote at x equals two. That's where the original x-intercept was. Next, we look at where is this graph one and negative one, okay? So this graph was 1 right here, so it will still be 1. And where it was negative 1, it will still be negative 1. All right. And again, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Why is it y equals 0? Well, if you take a positive value and take the reciprocal, it's still going to be positive. It's never going to cross the x-axis. Okay. So where the graph gets bigger, the reciprocal gets smaller. Where the graph gets smaller, the reciprocal gets bigger. Okay, same thing here. Where it gets smaller, we're going to get bigger. And where the graph gets bigger, we're going to get smaller. Now there's only one critical thing, and we had trouble with this last year, the y-intercept, make sure you include that. So the original graph, the y-intercept was negative 2, so the new graph will be negative 1 over 2. Okay? So that's all you need to do for that graph. Let's try one that's just a little bit trickier. So start by graphing y equals x squared minus 4. Now, just a heads up, what is this graph? y equals x squared. Well, that's this one. Remember that parabola? What's a minus 4 going to do to this graph? It's going to drop it down 4 units. And if you quickly calculate the x-intercepts, they're going to be at negative 2 and 2. And you have this parabola. Okay, this is y equals x squared minus 4. Now, let's reciprocate. First of all, where are the x-intercepts? Here. And here. At x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. Okay, again, we draw those just to show the asymptotic behavior. They're not really part of the graph. Okay, next, where is the graph 1? 
right here and here. Where is it negative 1? Right here and right here. Third, where does this graph get bigger? Well, you can see it's getting bigger here, so that must mean it's going to get smaller here. Okay, again, we're going to have that horizontal asymptote. It also gets bigger here, so I'm going to have getting smaller here. Okay, I'm going to leave between negative 2 and 2 for a second. Let's just finish up this graph. You can see that it should have this line here and this line here. Okay. Now let's figure out what's going on between negative 2 and 2. Well, before I go any further, let's take the y-intercept negative 4 and let's put it at negative 1 fourth, right? The reciprocal of negative 4 is negative 1 fourth. And so I want to go through this point, this point, and this point. Those three points I want to go through. Okay, you should be able to see fairly easy what's going on here. So I want to go through these three points. Okay, and you can see the graph here was getting smaller, so the reciprocal will get, oh come on, sorry, the reciprocal will get bigger and bigger. Okay, there it is. I have a few questions for you to try. Uh, these are from uh, the handout on graphing. Um, I will go over some of those in class, but I'd like you to try them on your own first. Okay? By the way, this homework is not from the textbook. This is from one of the, the first handouts that will be posted. Okay?